Hello, my name is White Gold. Welcome to my third video. I'm into healthy living, minimalism, and decos. If you're into that, like and subscribe. Since my first video was on healthy living, and my second one was on minimalism. This one is all about tacos. My standard poodle is on a raw diet and he eats way better than I do. One of my many life goals is to eat as well as Lincoln does. Before we get started, a quick disclaimer. I am not here to shame any dog parents for what they feed their fur kid. It is just my intention to share with you what I feed my dog, this alternative diet. You're dog's diet is determined by what they want to eat, what you can buy, what your vet recommends, what's easiest for you to prepare. There's so many factors. Bear in mind, as fancy as Lincoln's diet is going to sound, he still eats goose droppings. I'm pretty sure he eats grass on the daily and washes it down with rainwater from a puddle on the sidewalk. As a puppy, he used to swallow my socks and then barf them up at 2 a.m. He's basically a goat. He can digest anything. By no means is everything that enters his system 100% perfect. At the end of the day, they're all dogs and we as dog parents can only do our best to provide what we think a good life is. I'm sure what they think a good life is, is eating bacon every day. All right, first question. Why do you feed Lincoln all of these expensive meats? Get ready for a rant. This? This right here, it's about to get educational. In my intro psych courses, I learned that certain parts of the world, called blue zones, foster a longer lifespan because the culture is focused on health. Citizens of Okinawa and Sardinia have a healthier and longer lifespan because in part of their nutrition. What you eat affects your body, your mind, even your behavior. I took intro to cell biology when I was still in biomed. I'm about to give you a quick study on digestion. The human body and the dog body are kind of like donuts. Stay with me. Your body is the donut. Your digestive system is like the hole in the donut. What you put through your body determines which nutrients are available for absorption. Digestion is different from absorption. Digestion is where you break the food down into smaller molecules. You do this by chewing and dissolving it with your stomach acid. Absorption is where you get the nutrients into your body. Your small intestine is lined with these tiny finger-like projections called villi. These villi grab nutrients from the food passing through your small intestine. The nutrients go into the cells of your intestinal lining, eventually into your bloodstream, and it's dispersed throughout your body. It's sort of like an air hostess walking down the aisle and handing snacks to passengers on either side. Well, those passengers are your cells, tissues, and organs. Within every cell of your body, you have DNA, your genetic script, if you will. Your cell is like DNA in one hand, nutrients in the other hand. It reads your DNA to knit the nutrients from your food into the proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids that make up you. Once your food is broken down, the nutrients are transformed by your cells, your miraculous cells, into everything, including the very neurotransmitters you're using to understand my video. Ah, oh, I just love cell biology. I isolated it into one semester while I was working almost full time. The foods you put through your digestive system determine which nutrients are available for your villi to grab. The more processed the food is, the more it's like being late to Black Friday and there's barely any of the good stuff left. On the other hand, food that is whole and unprocessed is like getting to Black Friday early and you have the whole inventory to choose from because someone didn't come before you and pluck all the good stuff away. How does this apply to dogs? Well, low-grade kibble is like living on Fruit Loops. It's cheap, it's convenient, it's weirdly colorful for some reason, and it does have calories, so it'll keep you going for a while and it probably 
probably has some added vitamins and minerals, but short term, you're going to feel sluggish and irritable. Long term, you might have some major health issues come up from the utter nutrient starvation. If nothing else, food should be the category we splurge on. If you want to learn more, check out Pet Fooled. I watched it when I was 19. It's a documentary on the pet food industry, how they used leftover livestock parts, chemicals for flavoring, and they didn't prioritize screening for toxins in dog treats. They have this really cool section on how the war prompted the change from wet canned dog food to dry packaged dog food. I just find it so cool that dogs used to eat canned food like cats. When I first got Lincoln, he was on a kibble called Four Strong Paws. It's made here in Ontario. It was recommended by his breeder and the first three ingredients are chicken meal, brown rice, and chicken fat preserved in natural preservatives. All kibble has preservatives because how else is meat going to have a shelf life at room temperature for 18 months. Once Lincoln got sick, which I talk about in this video, I changed my mind about kibble. I was like, I'm so tired of not having him on the best food out there. I want to find something that's going to keep him healthy for a long time. I went on Dog Food Advisor and I typed in highest quality kibble. <laughs> One at a time, I tried Akana, Merrick, Origin, From, freeze dried raw by instinct, everything. As you can imagine, I was so overwhelmed because I only had Lincoln on each of these foods for a very short time, so it wasn't enough to know if it was working. I knew I couldn't trust the packaging because marketing always puts this blown up photoshopped piece of chicken on the front and then this tiny list of ingredients, like a paragraph of tiny text on the back. I call Diane, Lincoln's breeder. I tell her about my search for the holy kibble grail. She tells me that if I want to do the best I can for my dog to try feeding raw. She recommends Big Country Raw because they're right here in Ontario. Her dogs eat raw during their pregnancies so they can grow healthy small puppers. That night I do my own research because science and skepticism. The next day I go to Wren's. It had just opened in Ottawa at the time. They gave me a sample of Big Country Raw. I'm like this is awesome. I bought my first container of raw food for around $20 after taxes. It was four pounds. I just remember it felt so cold in my hands. All of Lincoln's food before that had been room temperature. For the first month of trying to feed raw, I was struggling. Lincoln wouldn't eat it because it didn't smell like anything. Raw meat doesn't really have a scent. I would try to make a game out of it. I tried to fast him, nothing. In hindsight, I wouldn't have worried so much because even though some dogs like mine are picky in the beginning, they won't let themselves starve. They will eventually eat it if it's offered to them consistently. But first time dog mom, 19 years old, panicking. I called Diane and was like, what do I do to get him to eat? And she's like, lightly steam it and see if that adds some scent. There I was steaming my dog's food. I don't know if that's what worked or if he was just so hungry that he couldn't afford to continue to be sus about the whole situation, but he finally ate the raw food. I slowly introduced him to different proteins because variety, which I'll get to later, we worked our way up. Now he loves raw food. He loves mealtime. He gets so excited. You can find Big Country Raw on Instagram. They have aesthetically pleasing photos of gourmet meals for their dogs. Some of them even plate their dog's food like a chef in a bougie restaurant. As pretty as it looks, if you're at all interested in feeding raw, don't mind them. We feed Lincoln what looks like 0.75 pounds of a cold bloody burger patty two times a day and he is happy. The next big question is how much does it cost to feed raw? Big Country Raw's website has a cost and portion calculator. If your dog is an adult, 
if he weighs 62 pounds like mine, if he's technically at an ideal weight, but he happens to be the Usain Bolt of dogs, if he has breakfast and dinner, I do buy in bulk, but let's assume we got the most expensive stuff independently. No supplements because I feed him whole fish and green-lipped mussels. If your dog's like mine, then he eats a pound and a half of food a day, three quarter pounds per meal. That comes out to $6.72 a day, which is $202 a month. Perhaps your dog is only 30 pounds, they've achieved their goal weight, are fed twice a day, you the pet parent buy in bulk because you're good with your money, fish oil so they're smarter than all the other puppies, the results show that your dog is minuscule and only needs 0.6 pounds a day, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 0.3 pounds per meal, for only $2.32 a day, you can feed a privileged first world dog raw meat. To nourish your microscopic doggo, it will set you back $70 a month. It actually costs me $230 a month to feed my very active standard poodle. Meal add-ons bump up the cost a little bit. That is $2,760 a year. Lincoln has been on raw food for three and a half years. I've spent $9,660, almost $10,000, up to now. Standard Poodles are a large breed dog with a lifespan of around 12 years. In that time, I will have spent $30,360. But before you freak out, Money Sense says that over an 11 year lifespan, a dog costs $36,420. I only really pay for Lincoln's vaccinations and food. No toys, doggy daycare, even when his vet bills go up at the end of his life, I will still be spending probably less than the average. All right, next question. What gear do you need to feed raw? I like to keep things simple. I don't use a scale to measure exactly how much food Lincoln gets. I don't do that for myself. All I really need is a stainless steel bowl and freezer space. Feeding raw, you will come into contact with bacteria like E. coli and salmonella. But keep in mind that dog stomachs produce a hundred times more stomach acid than human stomachs. They can eat things that we would get sick eating. Afterward, I wash my hands with warm water and hand soap. I also wash the stainless steel bowl with warm water and hand soap and wipe down the surfaces that his raw food touched with a baby wipe. Let's talk freezer space. Eric doesn't use his freezer much, neither do I. Three quarters of it on the right is all of Lincoln's food and one quarter on the left is Eric's rat's food. He makes a custom homemade diet for these lucky girls. I think that's more intense than buying pre-made, like commercially made raw food in patties. If you're interested in feeding raw, but you're like, my freezer's full, why should I empty out everything? Here are some of the benefits of feeding raw. Less drool from eating hydrated food, a shinier coat from all the healthy fats they're consuming, smaller stools because they're absorbing more of the nutrients. Their energy is sustained throughout the day because they have protein. They don't have these spikes and then crashes from carbs. Healthier teeth if you feed your dog's bones. I feed Lincoln bones because it helps clean his teeth. Dental costs for dogs, astronomical. I could not believe when my neighbor told me that her dog needed like, I think $4,000 worth of putting the dog under general anesthesia and doing a routine dental cleaning. There's a chance it helps with skin conditions, less hot spots, itchiness, redness, flaking, even yeast overgrowth because some ingredients in kibble might be contributing to the inflammation in the body and it shows up in the organs and the skin, we usually forget this, but the skin is an organ. I love feeding Lincoln. There's just this like dopamine rush that I get when something eats something thing that I gave them. My favorite thing about summer as a kid was feeding goats, llamas, 
horses and cows at petting zoos. I would get a little cup of animal feed. And I would just be so happy pouring it onto my hand, feeding them. And I'd be like, can I have some more? My mom would be like, no, that's enough. That's like three cups now. I'm like, but I want to see the nipple. As an adult, I've upgraded my arsenal. Here's my collection of expensive meats. First thing we have is beef dinner. This is what it looks like. Then we have green beef tripe, a superfood. The green in green beef tripe, it's the stomach lining of a cow, it means it's unprocessed. Pure pork, here we have pure lamb. I like to give him fish dinner. This is haddock, cod, and salmon. There's turkey dinner, free range Canadian turkey. We have pure duck, no veggies in there. This is beef lung. These are the add-ons I was talking about earlier. This is herring. This is a sardine. This is a New Zealand green-lipped mussel. This is a duck egg. This is a quail egg, a little bit smaller. This is a lamb ear. You can still see the perforation. This is a marrow bone. It's a beef marrow bone. Marrow bones are high in fat. As you can see, there's a ring of marrow inside. Lincoln will just use his teeth and his tongue to scrape at it for an hour. We give them to him once a week. Last but not least, this is raw goat milk. It's a good probiotic to promote healthy gut bacteria. Lincoln doesn't actually eat chicken. Um, chicken is overly farmed in monoculture, so it's above him. That's how fancy he is. I don't have pure salmon, bone broth, and lambsicle. You might be wondering what a lambsicle is. Lambsicles are dehydrated lamb testicles. If you're curious what they look like, you can check them out on my Instagram. What exactly is in a raw food patty? In your standard beef dinner by Big Country Raw, there's 70% muscle meat, 10% organs, 10% ground bone, and 10% fruits and veggies. I just love the ingredients that they chose. Canadian pasture-raised beef, ground beef bone, beef heart, beef liver, beef spleen, beef kidney, apples, carrots, spinach, blueberries, cranberries, barley grass, wheatgrass, and kelp. Yes, even kelp. Because seaweed is nutritious, that's why it's part of the Chinese diet. It is almost completely dark outside, so that is a wrap for this video. I really appreciate you watching till the end. If you liked it, consider giving me a like and leaving a comment. I'm on Insta at... Come a little closer. Bella to summon me. If you're interested in intentional living, check out my first video ever. Thank you for your support and same time next week. Okay, bye.